We're on the run. We can't fight five people. We're just gonna give up the tower. No need in trying to protect it against five people. Now that we have a front line, we're gonna try to play off this Osiris. Once again, we're casting our abilities on the Sylvanas. That's exactly what they want. We're gonna throw out our two, switch to our three, throw out our burn. We're able to get the pick onto one, get the pick onto two. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shiny B Gaming, and today we're we'll playing Avatar Aang Merlin in mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, Merlin just received a buff and a nerf. So we're gonna go over that along with his kit. So let's go ahead and jump into his kit. Merlin's one in his purple stance is Eclipse. Merlin conjures an orb of condensed celestial energy that grows in size as it travels, dealing damage every 0.4 seconds and marking enemies hit. Enemies marked take additional damage if they stay within the outer range of the Eclipse. Merlin's one in the fire stance, Radiate. Merlin channels a beam of intense fire for two seconds that deals damage every 0.25 seconds. Each time Radiate hits an enemy, it also applies a burn, dealing additional damage over time. Merlin's one in the ice form is Frostbolt. Merlin hurls a Frostbolt that explodes if it hits an enemy and dealing additional 15% damage if they are slowed. This ability received a nerf on the power scaling. Merlin's two in the purple form is Vortex. Merlin deploys a field of arcane energy at a location. After delay, the Vortex deals damage and pulls enemies towards the center. Merlin's two in the fire form Dragonfire. Merlin summons forth two ethereal dragons to spout flames towards each other, dealing damage to enemies every 0.25 seconds. If caught in the center of the area, enemy gods have their protections reduced. The dragons last for 3 seconds. The protection reduction is going to be 0.5% at level 1, 2.5% at level 5. Merlin's 2 in the ice form. Merlin creates a blizzard at a target location that lasts for 4 seconds. After a brief delay, shards of ice start hurling down every 0.5 seconds. Enemies hit, take damage, and progressively get more slowed while they stay in the area. The slow per stack is going to be 8%. You can have a maximum of 5 stacks. Merlin's 3 flicker. Merlin quickly teleports a short distance in front of him. As you level up this ability, the cooldown gets lower. Merlin's ultimate, elemental mastery. Merlin taps into his inner potential, exploding with energy in the stance he is currently attuned to. During this time, Merlin can choose which stance to enter next. After the explosion reaches its apex, it collapses in on itself. Enemies are dealt damage from both the explosion and the implosion and suffer different elemental effects depending on which stance's energy they are being hit by. The fire stance is going to apply tick damage, the ice stance is going to apply a 20% slow for 1.5 seconds, and the arcane stance is going to knock them up. And finally, we have Merlin's passive, Overload. Every time Merlin casts a spell, he gains a stack of Overload. When Merlin fires his next basic attack, it'll be augmented with Lightning, dealing extra damage to the first enemy hit. You can have a total of 3 charges, and the charges last for 5 seconds. Looks like we were able to get the, or at least our first kill, on the Jingqing by rotating. And we're able to clean up the Chernobog as well. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point into our 1, level 2, put a point into our 2, level 3, put a point into our 3, level 4, another point into our 1. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can, yes. max out our 1, max out our 2, max out our 3. We left Fountain with Conduit Gem and Tier 1 of Rod of Tahuti. Conduit Gem is going to provide us 25 magic power and 10 MP5. It is going to provide us a passive that every second we're going to gain a stack of arcane energy, causing your next damaging ability to deal an additional 2 true damage and remove all stacks. So whenever it is fully stacked, it'll deal an additional 40 true damage. True damage is damage that is true, meaning that protections do not matter, it will always deal that amount. Most damage runs through a protections check, true damage does not. I remember the good old days before I started my YouTube channel. I was back in college and I would just pound Merlin Qs. I'd play Merlin in every mode and almost only Merlin. 
it'd be finals week. I'd study in the morning for about five hours. So I thought I kind of knew enough or couldn't study or learn anymore. And then I would just pound Merlin cues. Really liked Merlin at a time. He has received some nerfs since I used to grind him, but he's still a very strong character. I actually have a clip of uh, Merlin's fire stance, Radiate, hitting the enemy but missing all of the damage. So the buff that they made reducing the ticks from 0.5 seconds to 0.25 seconds is actually a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I have the clip to prove why it is a beautiful thing. Looking for me? Back to the game, we're able to get a little bit of damage onto this Izzes. I would call her Izzes for YouTube's sake. We're gonna use our ultimate, use the fire stance, use our one. We're very, very weak. We're able to avoid her ball. One more basic. Ooh, looks like we're just gonna back it up and play it super safe. We do have our little blink, our three, in just a moment. We're gonna activate our two. Blink past her damage, hit her with the one, and we're able to get her with the burn damage. We're gonna go ahead and back and pick up the cooldown boots. We wanna get as much cooldown online as possible, and we plan on picking up Soul Gem later on in the build, so we are gonna have some lifesteal. The Avatar Aang skin is such a cool skin. We're gonna go ahead and cast an ability so we can get some of the golden XP from the Harpy Camp. I like to sit in the air stance or the purple stance and cast my abilities. This allows me to get my damage off onto the minions from a pretty safe distance. As we level up our two, we're gonna start switching into other stances and trying to be more aggressive. However, in the early game, we're just gonna level up. I don't think Merlin has the strongest early game, so we do wanna try to level up and then engage, kinda of play a little safe. I think Izzes has a better early game than we do. She actually has a very strong early game. We might blink in on her and do some damage right here. Nems here, we're going to throw out her two. We want to cast our purple one before changing stances. We change stance, we're going to throw out our fire, throw out our one. And oh my goodness, we're able to clean her up with a basic attack. Besets here, we're going to start falling back. I don't think there's too much we can do for this Nem. It looks like Nem's able to get out anyway. We're gonna see if this Bastet oversteps. It doesn't look like she's going to. Merlin potentially has a lot of good burst potential. If you can gash your abilities in whatever stance you're in, get close to them, use your ultimate, and then hit them with whatever the other abilities you have are, you can usually burn somebody down. It's just a matter of learning how to play Merlin and how to land the combo of abilities. Like I said, in the early game, I like to just chill in my air form or my purple form. Then in like the mid to late game, I think the ice form or water form is a little bit better to hang out in. And then whenever you wanna engage and close the distance to burn the enemy down, you wanna to switch to your fire form. The sets here, we do have our three, which we just used. 
So we're just hanging back and farming. We have two levels on the enemy Izzas. So we're in a good position right now. 4-0-1. Oh, yeah, we're we're in a good position. We're getting close to having enough money for Rod of Tootie. Or as we like to call it on the channel, Rod of the Booty. Looks like dual lane is pushed up pretty far, so we're going to go ahead and rotate over, see if we can get a pick. Attack the gold fury. It looks like they're backing, so we're trying to get Nem to go for gold. On my way. They did announce two more crossover battle passes coming out in 2021. I've been saying this as a joke for a long time, but I hope they make SpongeBob the next battle pass. Retreat left lane. Enemy missing right. I never really heard of the Ruby anime show that they did the first crossover in, but the Avatar and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossovers were amazing. You know what would be really cool? A One Punch Man skin for Mercury. But that's not Nickelodeon property. I think they only have the deal with Nickelodeon. So we just picked up Rod of Tahuti. Rod of Tahuti is going to provide us 140 magical power. It's going to provide us 35 MP5 and 10% magic penetration. We got a little bit of a tussle going on. Looks like nothing came from the tussle. Rod of Tahuti's passive. Whenever you land a basic attack or an ability on an enemy, you're going to gain 25 additional magical power if the target was below 50% health. This item is really strong. It's going to give us some percent penetration, some power, and 35 MP5. 35 MP5 is the amount of mana we're going to recover every 5 seconds. So we're really gaining 7 mana per second, which means we really don't need to worry about buying mana anymore. Buying mana potions, at least. You can't buy mana. Be careful, middle. On my way. We're pretty weak. It's a 3v2. We're just going to hang out throughout our two. We're going to play this from range. Nem's rotating in. Nem's able to get the pick onto the Izzes. Looks like they're rotating to dual lane. Savannah comes back mid. Retreat. Enemies incoming. They're killing us out here. Enemy ultimate down. We're going to go ahead and use our free ward. Right now we're still just playing it really carefully. Just sitting back, casting our abilities, not trying to engage anything. We're really just trying to farm up. Get at least another item online before we really start trying to fight right here. It is Valentine's Day today. I should have been a little bit smarter on picking which video I was gonna post today. I should have done like a Cupid or maybe a Capri video today. Small oops by me. Valentine's is the only time I can be able to eat bags of candy hearts without being judged. I know everybody hates candy hearts, but man, I just go through bags of those every February. We're going to start working on Soul Gem next. Enemy 
We're gonna go ahead and throw out our two. We don't connect on anyone. We're hanging out in the back line. We want to be outside of the range of the enemy team. Just casting our ability. Sylvanas is in there. Throw out our two. We get the pull onto the Sylvanas. Set jumps in. We're gonna throw out our one. Blink away. We're under tower, so we're safer. We're not completely safe. We're gonna go ahead and switch to the ice stance. It would have been better if we threw our two into the jungle. Beset blinks in. Sobek's in a little bit of trouble. That's Beset's jump. Odin's able to get the pick. We're going to throw out our two. Get some good damage onto the Beset. Unfortunately, we kind of lost that team fight, yet we were able to survive. So and that's the one plus of playing the way we're playing. Oh no, here comes the CC chain. We're gonna kind of fall back a little bit. We do not want to use our three aggressively. We use our beads to avoid the is this stun. Good call by our solo lane. If they're gonna hide under tower, we should go for gold. That's here, but I think we have better secure. We're able to get it. They can't handle us. Is 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 weak. Nim's able to clean it up. Good team fight by us. That's two down on the enemy team. We have five up. Any fight is going to be a good fight for us. That's an Odin ult somewhere. We're gonna cast out our two. Cast out our one. We get stunned. Poi is able to get the pick onto the churn. We're able to get the tower. We're on cooldown for everything, so we want to be pretty careful right here. I don't know. I feel like with Merlin, it's really easy to stay alive. He has a lot of ranged abilities. You just cast them, keep your distance, try to keep your team between you and the enemy. We do have enough money for his soul gem, so we are going to be picking that up the next time we back. We're able to get the tier 1 tower in mid. We're going to go ahead and back, pick up soul gem. Soul gem is going to provide us 80 magical power, 150 health, 12% lifesteal, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that on successful hits of an ability, you're going to gain 1 stack. At 4 stacks, your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal bonus damage equal to 30% of your magical power to each god hit, and it'll heal yourself and allies within 20 units for 40% of your magical power, and will consume the 4 stacks. So whenever we have four stacks, our next ability is going to have a little extra oomph to it. We're going to blink outside of the Odin cage. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. We use our Aegis. Churn is also on us. We're going to transform to the fire stance. Just drop our kit. Get some good burn off. We're still in trouble. Oh my goodness, we're still alive. We keep wiggling. We're out. The set's here. We're going to throw out our two. We're able to avoid that. Get her pretty weak. We're still alive somehow. We're out. We're too weak to do anything else. Go ahead and switch over to the wind stance or the purple stance. I like to start my engagements in the purple stance or the blue stance. I like to finish my engagements in the fire stance. Four people going into jungle, trying to cut off our two. We're going to rotate in. Osiris is going deep. I think it would have been a little bit better if he went towards us. We throw out our one. 
Odin's just able to shield up. Yeah, Osiris was just running away from us. If he ran to us, we might have been able to provide a little bit of peel. He'd have been able to get a little bit of a pick. We get silence, but we're able to get one tick of burn damage onto the Izzas and get the pick. Osiris was able to get the Sylvanas. Our team is rotating out, so we're going to rotate out with them. We're not going to push the tower for the only one. We're going to go ahead and pick up the Enhanced Red Buff. The Enhanced Red Buff is going to provide 7% additional Magical Lifesteal along with the original power. It looks like we're about to lose left tower. There's a wave pushing into it. This hat's here. We want to get outside of her jump range. Nem's working on Pyromancer, we're going to help her out. Our fire stance is the best stance for burning objectives. That was insane. Another way to think of it is that the purple stance is long range combat, the blue stance is mid range combat, and then the fire stance is close range combat. We're working on Kronos' Pendant. Kronos' Pendant is going to provide us all the cooldown we're ever going to need. Enemy missing Enemy missing. Enemy missing right. Enemy missing middle. We have enough for Kronos' Pendant, so we're going to go ahead and back. Kronos' Pendant is going to provide us 100 magical power, 20 MP5, and 20% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that every 10 seconds, the Pendant will subtract 1 second from all of your abilities currently on cooldown. This is going to be very helpful for reducing the cooldown on our ultimate, allowing us to switch stances more often. We throw out our 1, we're able to get the pick onto the Izzas. We transform into the fire stance, we're gonna throw out our two, throw out our one. Looks like Bassett was able to jump away safely. Getting some basics onto the Odin, and we're able to get a pick onto the Odin. We wanna keep pushing, but our team wants to go for gold. We're hungry for the triple, so we're on the hunt. We just don't do enough damage to get the pick onto Sylvanas. So we're gonna go ahead and back. I think attacking Fire Giant would have been the big brain play. We still might get it. The set's on us. We're in a little bit of trouble. We're going to activate our ult, transform into the water form. We were able to wiggle out of there. Our team's on Fire Giant. Our positioning is not fantastic. It's getting better as we rotate away from the enemy spawn. So if you notice this greenish glow around Aang, that means that our next ability that hits an enemy god is going to get the soul gem proc. I was thinking about making a video on all of the visual effects and what they mean. However, the developers said that they want to rework that a little bit this year. Kind of make them a little bit more clear. I think that's interesting. That's probably going to be a good quality of life change. So we are at 20 
well, we're actually at 40% cooldown reduction, and we're getting additional cooldown from the passive on Corona Suspendent. Switch over to the Wind Stance, throw out our one, kind of just throw out our two. Looking a little iffy in mid, so we're gonna start backing it up. We're just gonna immediately use our teleport. Our team's rotating in behind. We use our beads, because we thought the is is too was coming for us. We're gonna set up a ward, waiting for our abilities to come off cooldown. Throw out our one, throw out our two. The two does not connect. Chiron is here. Not Chiron, Chernabog. That's a Chernabog ultimate. We throw out our one, Odin's able to duke it, but we pull him back into it. We're gonna throw out our ice form. This sets on us, we're in a little bit of trouble, we're gonna blink away. It's not technically a blink, but we like to call it a blink. Throw out our two, basic attack, and we're able to clean up the Sylvanas. We're gonna rotate to this team fight. They really push the Hoi hard. We're gonna throw out our two, transform, throw out our one. She's able to jump away and avoid it. Hanging out in the back line, waiting for abilities to come off cooldown. Is that still on us? Looks like our team is deciding to just go for the structure. Which, if we're not going to get engagement from the enemy team, is the smart thing to do. We're going to throw out our one, throw out our two. We're able to get the pick onto the Chernabog. We're going to blink away. Switch to the fire stance. We get silence. We're just going to fall back. Be right back. We're able to blink away, avoid the damage. It looks like we should just back up here. We're just going to cast abilities as we fall back. The set's on us. We're going to switch over to the fire stance. Make it very hard for her to fight into us. An enemy has been Osiris is able to get the pick. Chernabog's rotating in on us. We're going to blink away. We use our Aegis. I think our Vortex actually pulled him closer to us. And unfortunately, we go down. First death of the game, little unfortunate. We're gonna go ahead and pick up Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is gonna provide us 95 magical power, 300 mana. It has a passive that whenever we damage an enemy with an ability, we're gonna remove 2% of the target's maximum health. If the target had over 2000 health, this effect is gonna scale up. It can scale up to a maximum of 9% at 2,750 health. Subsequent hits on the same target are gonna do half the bonus damage. It's a 3v3, we have minions pushing the tier two over in left. Right now, I feel like we're playing this game slow and safe. We're getting a structure, going for an objective, grouping up as a team. Our team's doing a good job of fighting together. We almost have double their kills. Holy cow, we're up 18,000 gold. Nope, can't math. We're up 14,000 gold. Attack the gold fury. 
on my way. While we have Fire Giant, we should really group and try to push structures. Going for the Fury is kind of a waste of time. That's something that we could grab if we fail to push structures. Oof, we should not back. We should push. That's a misplay by us. So we sold our starter item and we went with Obsidian Shard. Obsidian Shard is going to provide us 70 magical power and 20 magical penetration. It has a passive that the first ability we cast is going to gain an additional 10% magic penetration. This can only occur once every 10 seconds. Going into Archmage's Gym probably would have been the better play. However, whenever I recorded this, I wasn't super sold on Archmage's Gym. Archmage's Gem is a very good item. I felt like my build was lacking penetration, so that's why I felt like I needed to sell it and pick up some percent pen. We lose our Nem. Right now we're casting our damage onto their tank, which is not what we want to do. We want to hit one of their squishy characters. We get some great damage onto the Beset. It is now a 3v5. We're on the run. We can't fight five people. We're just going to give up the tower. No need in trying to protect it against five people. Now that we have a front line, we're going to try to play off this Osiris. Once again, we're casting our abilities on the Sylvanas. That's exactly what they want. We're going to throw out our two, switch to our three, throw out our burn. We're able to get the pick onto one, get the pick onto two. We're going to chase down this Izz. -Iz. Once again, I'm calling her Izz -Iz for YouTube sake. We're going to switch over to the purple stance. We probably switch, should have switched over to the blue stance. We're going to throw out our one. We miss our two. We get ulted by Sylvanas. We're in a little bit of trouble. We're going to use our Aegis. This Chernobog is absolutely melting. He's going into crit, so he's dealing really good damage. We throw out our one, throw out our two. Unfortunately, don't connect on either. We're going to go ahead and back. Oh my goodness. Two basics and we die. We realize that is a pretty big mistake. We should have backed. So we had enough money for the movement speed potion. We're gonna go ahead and pick that up. Looking to sell our boots in just a little bit. I think it would've been better to buy Archmage's gem, sell our boots, and then pick up Obsidian Shard. Be careful. Enemy missing. Looks like the enemy team is kind of positioning themselves around the fire giant. Yep, the enemy team is on it. We have our team rotating in. The fire giant's still about half health. Looks like they might have been baiting it. They all pulled off a fire giant. We're gonna cast out our two, cast out our one. Switch over to our purple stance, throw it. Oh, we wanna blink out. The set's on us. We're dead. We throw out our two. She's able to blink over it. 
Super unfortunate. We were able to trade ourselves out for two people. Our team is winning this fight. That's a four for one. Great fight for our team. One for five. So even though we go down, our team is able to clean up. We were just too appealing of bait for Bastet. Why the Hoi is on Pyromancer instead of pushing on the DA side, I do not know. Our team might have been able to get the middle Phoenix right there. They had two people up. Maybe not. Fire Giant is definitely the safer call. If Churn ults in, that could be an issue, but I don't think he's going to. And of course he does, because I said I don't think he's going to. Our team's able to secure the, the Fire Giant. The Gold Fury is an Oni Fury, so we definitely want to try to make a play for it. Take this On my way. We're just going to hang out in our Fire Stance. This is where we do the most damage. The enemy team is cleaning up minions in the left. We have a majority of our team pushing in right, and we have Osiris marching up mid. We don't do a whole lot of basic attack damage. We're able to clean up the Phoenix. We're just trying to zone for our team. They're at our one. Where he's able to get the pick. Churn's able to get the pick. This churn is just melting. Switch over to our water form. We do have fire giant, but we're backing right now. We're going to blink away. Throw out our two. Throw out our one. We need to keep backing up. Throw out our air. One. Throw out our two. That's two people down. We need to fall back. Minions might be able to get this Phoenix for us. Oh, we just used our three aggressively. And the minions get it for us. No reason for us to hang out. We're going to go ahead and just back. Such cool backing animation. We're going to go ahead and sell our booties and pick up Spear of Desolation. In this build, I feel like Archmages would be better than Spear of Desolation. We should have upgraded Conduit Gem to Archmages Gem. And then gone into Obsidian Shards for our boots. Nem saying 2k damage from Churn Autos. Yeah, Churn is melting. Sobek says back door. Nah, I think we can just team win this. We just need to pick a good fight. Nem's hanging out in our fountain. So any fight's not going to be the best fight. It's going to be a 4v5 at best. On 
We cast our abilities. We're going to fall back a little bit. We blink away. We're casting our abilities to get the set off of us. Our front line's got to be in a rough spot. Two of our backliners are just falling back. Before he's able to get the pick onto one. Cast out our two. Cast out our one. We need to focus this churn. Osiris is able to get the pick. Osiris is able to get a double kill. One basic attack just took out half of our health. Churn just got a double. Turn has got a triple. triple kill. We should have beats that. And turn got a quadra kill. The one man keeping the enemy team still in this game. But whenever you have a basic attack that removes a thousand health, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Nemesis is getting spectral because holy. Your team has destroyed a right We're selling our spirit. That did nothing for us. We're going to go into Mantle of Discord. We can't be getting killed in two basic attacks. Now that our team has identified the problem and we're going to focus churn, we should be able to win this next team fight. Okay. On my way. Our team's gonna make a play for the fire giant. The enemy team's gotta defend, so there's probably not too much that they're gonna be able to do. Attack middle lane. We will have our revenge. Oh man, we just did a lot of damage to Churn. We're able to get the pick. Now it's going to be a good fight, no matter what kind of fight it is, because their Churn is not in the fight. We get some good damage onto the set. Nem's able to clean her up. It's a 3v4. Nem's just running into the Titan. We're going to cast out our 2. And Nem's able to secure it. And that's going to be the end of this one. We were able to secure the W. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.